Hi, welcome to Job Form. My name is George, and today I'm going to show you how to create a registration form. Now, you might need to create one for an appointment form, a booking form, or maybe an event form. So, I'm going to show you how to create that right now in my dashboard. So, let's jump over there. All right, this is JotForms dashboard and super easy to create a registration form. So let's jump over to create a brand new form. And we have two options available. We can create one from scratch or we can create one from a template. Now in this video, we're gonna cover how to create one from scratch, but I'm just gonna show you really quickly that you can select any one of the templates that you like. Now we have the registration form category right here and you can select any one of the templates that you'd like right here. Now, if the template doesn't look the way you like, you can edit that later on the builder. So let's go back and select one from scratch. We're going to click the classic form. And this is our builder. This is where we're going to create our registration form. So we're going to click on add elements. Now for a registration form, we're obviously going to need the name. We will need the email. Now address could be optional, but we will add it in this right now. We'll add the phone number. We're going to select a date picker down here. And we are also going to add the appointment section right here. All right. So every element that we added right here, we can edit individually. So if I click on this element, we have this little gear right here that lets us edit the settings for this specific element. Now, depending on the element that we select are the options that are going to pop up on the right. Now we have the general settings where we have the alignment. For example, we have these type of alignments. Now you can see that all the elements change because we have selected set as form default. But let's keep it on the top for now. We can make it required or not. Um, in this case, obviously we do need the name, so it has to be required. We have the sub labels. We can duplicate this section if we'd like. We have more options available to add, for example, if we need the middle name, the prefix or the surfix and the advanced options for the placeholders, the hover text. So if you need to add something like, you know what, this has to go here, you add that as, add as, as a hover text. You can make it a read only, the shrink and height label if necessary. Height label is really useful for conditional logic, which I'll show you in a bit. Now, next thing we have is the phone number. We'll keep this one as optional. We won't make it required, but if we need to edit the options, we could do that here. For example, the input mask, which we're seeing right here. We could change that, for example, to be one, two, three, four, right? And if you, this is a uh, specific area code that we need, well, we could add, also add it right here just to have a little input mask there. We also have advanced options. We can make it read, shrink, or hide label also. We have our address field. We have the date picker. In this case, we're gonna change it to, for example, birth date, because we're gonna use this to only let in people who are over age, right? So they're over 18 or 21, depending on the state that you're from or country. So now we have the settings for this section for the birth date. Okay. So we got the general settings and we can make it. Yes, it's going to be required. We have the separator sections, the sub labels right here. We have the options right here. So in this case, depending on the country, you can change the date format. For example, for United States, it's month, date and year, but it could be different for another country. The default date, yes, we can change that if we want. Or for example, we can change it to current or a custom date. We can make it a calendar pop up. So yeah, let's enable that one. The start of the week will be Monday. We can change the light option, validate light mode. And we have available options right here, like month and dates available and keep it as today. Next thing we have is time, right? We can enable the time field if we need that. In this case, since it's the birthday that we need, we'll disable that. Enable limits. So we're going to use the age verification. So in this case, they have to be over 18 to actually register. They could select a past or future dates. Since this is the birth date, we obviously don't want them to select a future date, but yes, a past date. Days of the week available. This is for other settings, but we won't use it for birth date. We'll keep it enabled. We could set a start or end date. We can disable custom dates also right here. So for example, we can disable the dates that are you know, 18 years ago, like through now, we can do that. We can disable date ranges also available. Okay. We have the advanced section right here. So disable past dates. In this case, we're not going to disable that again, Hubbard text, read only shrink or hide field. This way we can know if they are over age or not. Now we can set a conditional logic not to let them register again with different type of conditional logics if we need available that. Now we have the appointment, right? We can keep it as an appointment or we can name it something else if we'd like. So we could change this, for example, event date, for example, event date, or we can keep it 
as appointment. All right, so we can also change the label alignment. We can make it required, and in this case, we'll keep it as yes. No, we'll keep it as optional. I'll show you a little bit of conditional logic. Ability, all right, so we have appointment slot duration. So in this case, the duration could be any one of these or make it custom if they need to be longer or a specific minute that you want to set. We can set the intervals, for example, from two. You can edit everything that you need right here to have the appointment right, just like you need it. The intervals are there, the lunch date, for lunch time. So for example, let's just say that we've set right here, right? From nine to 17 hours, right? But let's just say we have a lunch time from 12 to 14 hours, right? So if we enable this, it's gonna remove those time slots so people can't select it. And you can add and change these as you want. The limits. For example, we can add a start or end date. So let's just say you want to have uh, a date that you wanted to start from. Let's just say you're not gonna start appointments until next week. You can have it there or an end date. The rolling days available for offered appointments. So let's just say you don't want to offer appointments, I don't know, from three months from now or I don't know, a year from now, right? You don't want to keep that open. Or maybe you just wanna keep it really tight and say seven days, right? So you can see right here, we have disabled every single day until seven days, right? And this will be changing as the days come. Vacations and holidays, maybe you want to add, for example, um, Christmas and New Year's uh, Day. So for example, you would say, you know what, from December 22 to January 3rd, no appointments. So you can set the vacations there and you can add more if you want. Maximum appointments per day. Obviously you don't want to have all your day booked or maybe you do, but maybe you don't. So you can say two per day. So once two appointments are done, it will disable it. Minimum scheduling notice, for example, um, three hours from now, they can schedule. I think that's a bit tight, but you could change this. For example, I want to be notified at least eight hours in advance if I'm going to have an appointment. So you can enable that there. Advance, it could be appointment type, so like one-on-one -on -one or group. Date format, like I said before, depending on the country that you're from, you might need to change this. The start of the week, it's going to be Monday in this case. We could change the format from 24 hours or a.m. p.m., whatever is easier for you. And the default time zone. We can hide the field also if we want. And in this case, I will hide it because I'm going to show you some conditional logic. And for this conditional logic, I will add another basic element. So I'll add a drop down menu right here. And we're going to say appointment. And we're going to say cells and support, okay? Those are the, the conditional options right here. And it's gonna be, we're gonna name that options, all right? And to use conditional logic, we are gonna go into settings, conditions, and we have several type of conditional logics right here. So if we use calculated field, it would be for, I could use it for a date, for example, or make some calculations. We can go into show or hide fields. So in this case, this is how it works. If this happens, do that. That's why we have if and do. So if the option is equal to appointment, then we are going to show the appointment section, save. Let's go back into the builder, okay? So conditional logic says that if I select the appointment section, this will pop up. If not, it won't. So you can use this as a contact form and also a registration form. Now let's go into the preview by clicking here on the top right. Okay, and we have the form builder right here. We have the builder, not, not the preview. And in this case, I am going to select the option right here. And I'm going to say the reason I'm here is because I want to make an appointment. So we got the appointment pop up. So in this case, if it's not going to be appointment, we don't want to show that because if it's going to be about sales, then we don't need the appointment information unless the appointment is going to be about sales, right? But in this case, we have it available right there. And like I said, the time frame will be seven days. That's why they can't choose any one of those. And Saturday and Sunday is disabled. So we can select one of these. And heads up, this also can be integrated with your Google Calendar. And if they register on this form, it will add it to your Google Calendar. So you can view that later. So it's super easy to do that. So let's go back into the builder. And the next thing I'm gonna show you are the basic settings that we have. So we have the form settings that we can change the title, the form status, add some more conditionals, logics right here, the emails, who's gonna be notified, and the autoresponders, the integrations. So this is where you would integrate, for example, with Google Sheets, PayPal, Google Drive, all the ones that you need, Google Calendar, and the ones that you might need there. 
We have the thank you page settings, so you can edit this as you like. For example, right now it's by default thank you, but you could change it or you can convert it into a redirect to an external link. So you might send them to a sales page or to your home page or just another page that you want to send them to. Also heads up, is it the Jot form is available for App Store and Google Play. And when you're done with the builder and settings, we can go into publish. So in publish, you can share this link right here and they can go straight to it and fill out the form for the appointment, for the event or booking, whatever you want to do. Invite by email if you want to send it out. You can share the form. We have the embed option. The embed option is also available on, you can embed it on any site that you want. And yes, you can embed it on WordPress. Assign to form, if you want to assign it to someone else. The emails, PDF, and platform third-party builder options. So for example, we can publish it from here to WordPress, Facebook, Blogger, Wix, Webly, Shopify, all the popular builders are right here. And you can just integrate really fast and really quickly. So basically, that is how you create a registration form on JotForm. Thank you for watching. My name is George, and this is JotForm. Bye-bye.